Hi everyone. Today I'm going to tell you about the dynamic mode decomposition, or DMD, which is an emerging data-driven technique to obtain linear reduced order models for high dimensional complex systems. And in addition to linear reduced order models, we also uh, can extract from, from this data spatial temporal coherent structures or patterns that dominate uh, the observed measurement data from that dynamical system. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the overview of DMD, and then in later videos, we're gonna see how to actually code it up and apply it to various systems, and we're also gonna look at modern innovations and extensions uh, to the theory. Okay, so uh, dynamic mode decomposition, DMD, essentially gives you a coupled system of spatial temporal modes. Okay, this was originally introduced in the fluid dynamics community by Peter Schmidt, and it was later connected uh, to this nonlinear dynamical systems theory called Koopman's, Koopman theory uh, by Clancy Rowley, Igor Mezic, uh, and their collaborators. Okay, so this came out of the fluids community, so I'm gonna start by showing you this kind of uh, fluids example. But since then, DMD has been applied to a broad range of systems, including disease modeling, neuroscience, uh, robotics, finance, plasmas, you name it, DMD can be applied. And part of the reason it's so applicable is because it's purely a data-driven method. It doesn't require any knowledge of the underlying equations of motion. It can work anytime you have data. You can essentially feed that data into DMD, kind of turn the crank, and you get out these spatial temporal modes and a linear dynamical system for how they evolve in time. Okay, so what we're gonna think about is, um, in this case, how this is a data-driven method. And I should point out that this can also be directly applicable to experimental fluids. So if I have PIV images from an experiment, I can use those with DMD as well. Uh, but for what I'm gonna show you, I'm essentially gonna walk you through DMD on this example of simulated fluid flow past a cylinder. So this is the vortex shedding movie of flow past a cylinder. And what DMD first does is it takes all of this collected data. So if I had a movie of my flow evolving in time, I would essentially break that movie up into snapshots or images as they evolve in time. So my flow state at time one, my flow state at time two, and so on. In this case, I'm plotting vorticity. And at each time step, I have something like 100,000 measurements of vorticity in space. Then what I do is I organize this data into these big matrices X and X prime, okay? So the columns of X, um, the X matrix, are essentially the columns of my data reshaped into, sorry, my, my snapshots of data reshaped into very, very tall column vectors that are evolving in time. So X1 is a big column vector where I take my, <clears throat> my flow field at time one and I reshape it into a tall column vector. X2 is the next snapshot, X3 is the next snapshot, and so on and so forth. So the columns are essentially evolving in time along with the dynamics of the system. In this case, these are the nonlinear Navier-Stokes equations, and so I'm collecting data from either a simulation or an experiment, and I'm stacking, uh, I'm reshaping those, those flow field snapshots into very tall vectors evolving in time. So that's what X is. Okay, X prime, is that exact same data matrix, but advanced one time step into the future. Okay, so instead of x at time one, at time two, at time three, x prime is shifted one delta t in the future, so it's x at time two, x at time three, x at time four, and so on and so forth. Okay, and so essentially, the first step of DMD is to collect your data, then what you do is you organize it into these big matrices. And for fluids data, these matrices are usually very tall and skinny. Okay, so maybe I have you know, hundreds of thousands or even millions or billions of measurements per time snapshot, but maybe I only have a few hundred or a thousand snapshots in time. Okay, usually that's how, how these kind of fluid data evolve is that I have a ton of spatial measurements, maybe millions of spatial measurements, but I only have a few hundred snapshots in time. So these are super tall, skinny matrices. And then what the dynamic mode decomposition does is it essentially tries to find a best fit linear operator A that advances X into X prime. Okay, so the basic assumption here is that you can write down this dynamical system um, in terms of a linear dynamical system. So we're gonna say 
x prime is approximately equal to some big A matrix times x. Okay, that's the framing uh, of Peter Schmidt's paper is basically try to find the best fit linear operator A that best agrees with this data, that best maps x into x prime. Now, <clears throat> I told you that we're doing this on really, really high dimensional data where maybe I have you know, a million degrees of freedom, a million spatial measurements in my column vector. Then this A matrix is a million by million matrix. Okay, so it has a trillion elements. You definitely don't want to actually compute uh, this A matrix, let alone look at things like its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so what the DMD actually does is it approximates the leading eigen decomposition, the leading eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this A matrix without ever actually computing the A matrix. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the the special sauce or the what's under the hood of the DMD algorithm is trying to approximate the dominant eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this A matrix, this best fit linear operator, without ever actually computing A in the first place, because it's way too big uh, to store and compute and work with. Okay, But you know, I'll tell you about how you do that in a minute. But once you get those leading eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A, essentially you can interpret any eigenvector of A has the shape of one of these column vectors, and that eigenvector of A can be reshaped into a flow field. So these are kind of eigenflow fields that are um, these dominant spatial coherent modes. And the nice thing is because they're eigenvalues, they correspond to a coherent time dynamics, either pure tone sine and cosine waves, or pure exponential decay or exponential growth, or combinations, kind of growing or decaying sines and cosines. So getting the leading dominant eigen decomposition of this A matrix gives you these spatial temporal coherent modes, these, these dominant coherent structures, and it also gives you the, the eigenvalues, the time dynamics of how these modes evolve in time. And so if I had kind of this uh, leading eigen decomposition of A, I could use that to predict how my system will evolve in the future by essentially predicting those future dynamics and recombining these modes to figure out what my state will do in the future. Okay, so DMD is extremely useful. It can be used for diagnostics. You can just use these modes to understand more about the physics and the flow structures and kind of what's driving your system of interest. You can also use DMD to get an actual model. This kind of the eigenvalues of A give you a model for how these, these modes evolve in time. And eventually, we're going to see that you can use these linear models for things like control. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going. Um, okay, good. Now, here's the actual uh, guts of what goes on under the hood to compute DMD. Because remember, I don't want to compute that gigantic, you know, million by million A matrix. So instead, what I do in most fluid systems and in, in most high dimensional complex dynamical systems of interest, disease modeling, neuroscience, um, fluids, if you collect enough snapshots of data in time, what you usually find is that there are dominant coherent patterns that emerge. Okay, so even if there's a million degrees of freedom of your system, in this case of vortex shedding, there's a pretty repeatable low dimensional set of patterns that emerge from those dynamics. So the first step in DMD is essentially computing a singular value decomposition of this big data matrix X to find your dominant coherent structures, which are the columns of this U matrix. So for those of you who are uh, familiar with the proper orthogonal decomposition, this is just the POD, and these columns of U are your POD modes. And they're organized hierarchically from most important to least important in terms of capturing the variance of X, okay? so. In many systems, even if I have a million by thousand matrix, I might be able to approximate it with the first five columns or first 10 columns of this U matrix. Those will be the first five or 10 POD modes. Okay? So then what we do is instead of writing X prime equals A times X, we substitute in the singular value decomposition here. So it's now A times the singular value decomposition of X. And I could compute what the big A is by taking the pseudo inverse. So one of the nice things about singular value decomposition is it's easy to invert this V star because it's, an or, it's a unitary matrix. So I multiply on the right by V, then I multiply on the right by sigma inverse, and then I multiply on the right by U complex conjugate transpose. 
and I can in pseudo inverse all of this stuff to isolate what A is. Okay? But we don't actually want to compute the million by million A. And so instead what we do is we project A onto these dominant singular vectors, U star and U, and we get this smaller A tilde. So if I had uh, a, a thousand snapshots in time, this would be a thousand by thousand matrix instead of a million by million matrix. Okay? And so then I can actually isolate this A tilde uh, directly from the data that I have. Okay, so I, I take the SVD of X, so I have U, Sigma, and V. I have X prime, and I compute this quantity here, which is this little A tilde matrix. And the way I think about A tilde, A tilde is a linear best fit dynamical system that tells me how my POD modes evolve in time, how these, these dominant coherent patterns evolve in time. Okay? And so this is a much, much smaller matrix. It's maybe thousand by thousand or hundred by hundred. And it has the same eigenvalues as the big A matrix. Okay, so that's something you can prove. You can actually go through this formulation and prove that this little A tilde has the same eigenvalues, the same non-zero eigenvalues as big A. And so I can compute the eigen decomposition of this little matrix to figure out what my eigenvalues of the big matrix are. Okay, so that's this step here. I do A tilde W equals W lambda. So W are my eigenvectors and lambda are my eigenvalues of my reduced dynamic operator A tilde. Okay, and so now I have the eigenvalues, but what I really wanted were the eigenvectors of A. I wanted these, because those eigenvectors are these mode shapes over here. Those are my dominant coherent structures. And so the last step to, so I have the eigenvectors of my little projected A matrix, and now the last step is to get these, um, these big eigenvectors of the original A matrix using this formula here. And uh, this is actually the formula from Jonathan 2's 2014 JCD paper. This is slightly different than the original uh, formulation that, that Peter Schmidt wrote down. And it, Jonathan 2 actually proved that these uh, high dimensional eigenvectors are actual eigenvectors of the original A matrix. Um, but basically you can just compute these. You know what all of these matrices are. These are your little eigenvectors of A tilde. Uh, these are the matrices from your singular value decomposition, and this is your big time-shifted data matrix. And so you can compute all of these. You can get the eigenvalues and the, uh, the eigenvectors of the big A matrix without ever actually computing the big A matrix. You're only working on this little A tilde matrix. Okay, so that's actually the entire DMD algorithm. It's really like four or five lines of code in MATLAB to do this entire procedure. It's super simple. If you have X and X prime, you can do all of this, and it's very, very fast and scalable uh, to get these, these uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay? Something else I'll point out um, that's not in this simple formulation is this is the exact SVD. So if this was a million by thousand matrix, I would have a thousand modes here. And I would get a thousand by thousand A matrix, A tilde, and a thousand eigenvalues and a thousand eigenvectors. But if my system has really, really low dimensional behavior, like I can describe X with the first five columns of U and capture, let's say, 99% of the energy of the system, then I can substitute all of these by the first five columns of U the first five by five block of sigma and the first five columns of V. And then what I get out is this reduced SVD and I get a little five by five A tilde. This is even more reduced. It's just the dynamics on those first five POD coefficients. And then I get five DMD eigenvalues and five DMD modes. Okay, we call these eigenvectors modes because they're spatial, temporal, coherent mode shapes. Okay, so that's all there is. That's how you actually compute DMD. You um, essentially, this is what DMD is defined as, is essentially the leading eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, of that big A matrix, but you compute them without ever actually resorting to building this gigantic million by million A matrix. Okay, and once you have that, you can actually get future state predictions. So now that you have your modes and your eigenvalues, if you know what your amplitudes of each of those modes are, this is kind of your initial condition of how, how much each of those modes is expressed in your data, then you can run this forward in time. You can essentially take these eigenvalues to higher and higher powers, or e to the lambda t, and predict what your system will do in the future. Okay, so that actually works pretty well for periodic systems like this. So if you have a, a high dimensional system that has some dominant 
periodic or quasi-periodic behavior, you can actually get a really good approximation, even if it's strongly nonlinear, with this very simple linear DMD. Now, if you have strong transients or intermittent phenomena or non-stationary behavior, then it gets more complicated and you have to resort to um, kind of fancier regressions uh, and, and a more general nonlinear framework. Okay? What I really want to emphasize, though, is that all the DMD is, and this is something Jonathan too pointed out, all the DMD is is a best fit linear model from measurements x into one time step in the future x prime. It's a best fit linear model. And so essentially you can use all of the powerful techniques of regression to, to find this DMD model. So for example, I could, um, I could do different types of regression, noise robust regression or sparsity promoting regression to find other variants of this, this A matrix. Okay, and so that's kind of the big picture overview of what DMD is. It's a procedure where you take your data, you stack it into matrices, and you find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a hypothetical best fit linear operator. So I, I uh, took this picture from, from my wife, Bing, um, and this is kind of a cute representation just pictorially of what the DMD is. So we did this first step of the singular value decomposition to do a dimensionality reduction step. That's basically the principal components. That's what the principal components analysis does, is it takes high dimensional data and mines it for the fewest, um, the fewest dominant patterns that explain that data. And then DMD is essentially what you would get if principal components and the Fourier transform in time had a baby, okay? So you basically build this linear regression model on principal components or POD modes or SVD modes, they're all the same thing. You build this linear regression model A tilde, this little model that tells me how the principal components evolve. And then I diagonalize that linear model to find what are the dominant patterns in time? What are the, the frequencies of how linear combinations of these principal components evolve in time, okay? So DMD is this adorable uh, kind of mashup of principal components in space and the Fourier uh, transform in time, okay? Okay, one last thing, uh, shameless plug. We did write a book on this, the dynamic mode decomposition. This is a Siam book. Uh, Nathan Kutz, myself, Bing Brunton, and Josh Proctor. And so if you're interested in DMD, if you want to know about the extensions and applications, if you want to go through code, you can read all about it here uh, and work it out for yourself. Okay, so uh, basically that's the dynamic mode decomposition in a nutshell. There's a lot more under the hood. Um, there's tons of extensions of this for what if I didn't have full state measurements? What if I didn't have measurements that were res resolved in time? What if I'm actively trying to control my system? What if I have noise? Um, we'll talk about all of those and we'll code it up on a few examples in the upcoming videos. Okay, thank you.